Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in the finals in 2025. We're going to start by optimizing uh, Windows and after that we're going to take a look on your Radeon and Nvidia Pyrinder and at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to disactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just disactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing uh, I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for NVIDIA, let's go to the global settings. Uh, so now in the global settings, if you're using the beta version, if you don't have uh, this option, you can push DLSS globally. If you don't have that, go to settings about and make sure that you opt in for the beta. So click on this and make sure that you click latest. So you're always going to use the latest frame generation, rear reconstruction and super resolution for uh, the game are, that are compatible with the NVIDIA app. So you're going to always use the latest version. Make sure that your low latency is at on. Don't use smooth motion on the finals. And uh, you have technically frame generation available, but too much input lag for smooth motion and even frame generation. So I don't recommend to use that. Max frame rate, if you want to lock it in your app. Me, I like to lock it at 237 to stay in my G-Sync range. And shader cache size, I like to go with 100 because I have the space on my disk drive. Uh, by default, you're going to use 5, so maybe you can go at 10. If you install a lot of different games, sometimes you can uh, have some space that are missing. So you will need to rebuild your shader cache. Sometimes you can cause stuttering, corruption, and stuff like that. So it's always good to increase a little bit your shader cache. For the system part, if you want to use G-Sync and your, com your uh, monitor is compatible, go with this. Make sure it's activated on your monitor. Make sure that you're using your native resolution of your monitor and also the IS refresh rate of your monitor. For the color, I like to make sure that uh, you're using 10 bits color if your monitor is compatible. And also, I like to add a little bit more digital vibrance. As you can see over there, I'm putting 5% more. So you're going to get a little bit more saturation. It's easier to see enemy in the game. For the performance tab, I like to put the power maximum at 133, so the maximum. You're going to put a little bit more wattage to your card, so you're going to get a better boost clock, longer boost clock. So you can expect like 5 to 7% boost in your FPS. But uh, you need the room on your GPU, so the algorithm of NVIDIA need to see that your GPU is fine, that you don't have a, your thermals are good, and you have the space on your card to uh, have a little bit longer boost clock. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Now let's go with Radeon. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. 
After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluid motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness a slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver, and I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game, so for the window mode, the developer recommend to go with borderless and I didn't see any dip in my FPS or stuttering, so you can definitely use that. Frame gen is available for RTX 4000 series and 5000 series. Honestly, I don't recommend to use that in those kind of game. Uh, too much input lag when you're playing, so I just disable it. Same thing with VSync, you don't want to add any input lag in your game, so just disable this. Nvidia Reflect, if it's available to you, go with on. After that, uh, resolution scaling. So for sure, go with DLSF is, if it's available to you. This one is the, the best way to, to, to play the game. Go with quality. You can expect 10% boost. For the model, I recommend Transformer. Transformer is DLSS4. But normally, if you're using the NVIDIA app, it should anyway override it. So you're going to use the latest version. Uh, if you don't have DLSS, you have FSR3 available. I really recommend quality. Uh, if you go lower than that, FSR3 is not great. It's a little bit uh, less better than the uh, DLSS3. So quality is really the one that you should use. If not, I recommend to just use nothing, no anti-aliasing and just go with the flow in native. Uh, you're going to see a little bit of breaking line because you will not have any aliasing in the game. But uh, the image is pretty clear without it. So you can definitely use that if you want. 
After that, field of view, uh, if you increase it, you're going to lose FPS. This one is more a question of preference. I really recommend to disable motion blur and lens distortion for better visibility. Your, the ray tracing part with the NVIDIA RTX, I really recommend to go with static. Don't use any uh, dynamic stuff. It's going to tank your FPS like crazy. View distance, I recommend to go with medium. You have four different brackets. You can expect here a 6% boost, and it's a good compromise. Anti-aliasing low, but anyway, if you're using DLSS, this one is not applied. L shadows, I recommend to go with low and nice 8% boost in your FPS over there. Post-processing also at low, better, like a lot better visibility with this one. Uh, when you go medium and even high, uh, the game looks very blurry with it. So I really recommend to go with low. Texture, if you have 6 gig and more of VRAM, normally you can run a pick. Uh, 4 gig at high, 3 gig at medium, less than 3 gig on your VRAM on your GPU. Go with low. Effect reflection, foliage, and global resolution, I recommend to go with low everywhere. Better visibility, you're going to get a nice 12% boost in your FPS, and it will be a lot easier to see enemy, and you will manage your FPS drop, because sometimes effects and reflection can be pretty tricky to run. The last one is in-game performance overlay. If you want to see the detail to see uh, are you bottlenecking with your CPU, GPU, you want to see your FPS and stuff like that, I recommend to use that for your stats. So that's pretty much it, guys, for the finals in 2025. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.